Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be looking into the new features in C Sharp 7 and Visual Studio 2017. Uh, so I believe you can you can get C Sharp 7 working in Visual Studio 2015, uh, but I believe it's a little bit tricky. So Visual Studio 2017 was recently released, uh, I believe three days ago? I don't have the exact date, uh, but anyway, Visual Studio 2017 is now out. Uh, it's in its final release. You can download it now on from Microsoft's site. There will be a link in the description. Uh, and C Sharp 7 is also out. Uh, one issue with that, ReSharper, which is what I use for IntelliSense highlighting and things, doesn't fully support it yet. Uh, so there, there are a few tweaks, and we'll kind of encounter a few of those during this video. Uh, what we're, two of the things that were introduced in C Sharp 7 are tuples uh, and pattern matching. So we're going to look into those two features in this video. Uh, it's going to be fairly straightforward. We're going to be making FizzBuzz, but we're going to be using some of the new features to accomplish that. Uh, so it may not be the most elegant or the best solution to the to the problem, uh, but we're going to. It's going to give us a great opportunity to look, to look at both tuples and uh, pattern matching. Keep forgetting that word. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so all the, all this is. Is this is a standard .NET Core application that I just created? It's just a .NET Core console application. This is the basic thing. If I just run it, we'll get "Hello World" down there. I hope. Um, if we don't, then I'm in trouble. Uh, yeah. So there we go. It prints it and then it goes away really quickly. <laughs> so what we need now is we need to actually implement a few things. Uh, so in order to get tuples working, uh, you actually need to do a little bit of legwork. Uh, so you have to go into NuGet and do the system value tuple. Uh, I was trying to get this working because these are totally new features. I've never used them before. Uh, so all you have to do, go and find the system.value tuple. Uh, it introduces a second tuple type because C Sharp already had tuples. They just sucked. Um, so these are better, they'll actually be value types, and they will have semantic naming, which we'll get to what that means in a second. So all you have to do is click install, it'll bring in a bunch of updates, accept all of that, it will install, I already have them downloaded so it should be good to go. And so what that lets you do is do something like this. Uh, so we can say, uh, let's do this a little bit differently, let's say a variable of strings is going to be equal to a tuple of hello, which will be hello, and world, which is going to be world. Uh, so this declares a two-value tuple. Uh, a tuple is just a, a combination of objects. So you can add as many things as you want to this. Uh, so if we want, we can say x is equal to 100 and keep going, uh, but for all we need for what we need right now, this works. And you also don't need the names. The names are, I believe, optional. So I should be able to do this as well, and it will work. Uh, but if you give the names, then what you can do is actually reference them by their name. Uh, so previously with C# -sharp tuples, it, there was no first, uh, there was no language support for it. So you had to do it all all yourself. Uh, so without this, you'd be doing like a, you'd be using the classic tuple class, and then you'd be declaring something like a string string of strings, and you'd have to create it this way, which is gross and not very fun. And then the names for the things would be like type one or yeah, item one and item two, which actually I believe are going to come back because I think. Some, something's being weird, but <clears throat> it's not quite working the way I had expected it to based on the docs. Uh, but anyway, with these, what we can do is we can actually change out this hello world and actually do like strings.world here and uh, strings.hello here. And this should, uh, I've never, I haven't actually tried this, <laughs> which would have been smart. But this should actually be able to pull out our values. Uh, so I'm going to stick a console read line here, just so it doesn't close on us. 
Uh, so if by putting a dollar sign at the start of your strings, it does an interpolated string, which means it will, inside of these brackets, normally you'd put like a zero or something and put the values afterwards. If you put the dollar sign in front, it will interpolate those from the current scope, which means that it's actually looking at the strings value and then looking at the hello value of that tuple, which means we can actually pull out all of our information this way and it should just all work. And we'll get hello world again. But now those are coming from our tuple value, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is something that you can do. You can actually, uh, you can return it from functions. So if I want to do like a uh, bool, now keep in mind, haven't done this either, uh, but if I want to do like hello and have it return, uh, say true and true, that's totally valid. You can do that. Uh, I would caution against this. If you start doing this a lot, yes, it's easy, but um, you probably just want a class for this if you if you end up doing this a lot. Uh, if there's some specific reason why you only need something once or something like that, then that's fine. But otherwise, I'd, I'd caution against that. Uh, so let's actually get to implementing our fizzbuzz. So we're going to go from uh, i is equal to 1 to 100. Uh, so that'll actually go from 1 to 99, which that should be fine for us. Uh, and then I'm going to just create a switch here. And we're going to switch on two values. So we've got i. I'm going to take the modulus of five, I think. Yeah, mod five is equal to zero. Uh, so if it's divisible by five, and we're going to do i mod three is equal to zero. Uh, I kind of want to switch these around just because that way they kind of go by increasing number. Uh, and so this is going to appear as an error because uh, ReSharper has a little bit of trouble with this. So I'm going to just build this. It should still build, and it does. Uh, but ReSharper is going to show an error here. It's going to say value of integral type uh, expected. The code's still good. The code still works. This feature just isn't supported in ReSharper yet. Uh, so I don't know when that's coming. I don't know what's going on, uh, but it's not there yet. So what I did is I created two values. I created an x and a y. Uh, so x is going to be if it's divisible by 3, and y is going to be if it's divisible by 5. And then we can use the pattern matching bit. Uh, so pattern matching lets you do a little bit more. Uh, so in the past, we've taken, uh, let's use our strings as an example. Can we use our strings? Sure. Um, should we use our strings? Probably not. Uh, but what you do is you do like a variable of an object is going to be equal to uh, our strings dot hello. Why? as, um, or you do like, if you test the types, so you'd say, is it a string? And if it is, then make it a something else, uh, or actually not make it something else, but actually assign it to a value. Uh, so historically, you do something like this and say, is this this type? What C sharp seven lets you do is actually say, is it this type? And if it is, assign a value. Uh, so we can give it a value at the end of this, uh, which my example is kind of getting a little bit out of whack because I haven't actually done this ever. <laughs> but we're going to just assign it to hello. Does this work? No. OK. Uh, let me actually figure out what this does because I am kind of curious if it's going to print hello, which I suspect doesn't exist in this scope. Oh, geez. I have done something horrible. There we go. Yeah, so hello doesn't exist in the scope, but object should. Uh, so that's not used. OK, this was a bad example. <laughs> I don't remember how to use this. Uh, sorry, it's still getting used to it. Uh, but what we can do 
I can demonstrate it in another way. Huzzah! Um, so we have our two Boolean values here, if it's divisible by 3 and if it's divisible by 5. Uh, so let's make sure I get this right. Uh, if it's divisible by 3, we want to print, print out fizz. Uh, so what we're going to do is say case, uh, and then I think you give the type, and you assign it to a value. Uh, so this is what I was trying to do previously, uh, but this time it will actually work. Well, I shouldn't say that now. It may not work. <laughs> so we're going to say the result. And, and then, so what we're doing is we're taking this, and we're trying to find something that matches a specific type. Uh, so what the big example, I guess, that Microsoft has been using has been shapes. Uh, so they've been giving shapes and saying, uh, if you do a switch on some sort of geometry and you want to find the size of it, uh, you could switch on, say, triangles and squares and whatever, have each of those be separate objects, and then use a case to actually select, say, triangle here, and then do the formula for a triangle's area, uh, or you can pass in like a circle or whatever. And that way you can solve all of that with a switch. Uh, we're doing that, but a little bit differently. Uh, so we're actually accepting a Boolean values, the two Boolean values, as the result. And then when uh, that result is equal to fizzbuzz, that's going to be our first case. So when re the result dot x is equal to false, or true, sorry, when it's divisible by both of them, so when it's equal to true and the result dot y is equal to true, then we want to do something and then break. Did I do that right? I may have done that wrong. Let me, so this is part of the annoyance of ReSharper not working. I should probably turn that off, uh, but okay. I'm going to have to do some digging, figure out what's going on here. Uh, because we don't really get that many useful errors out of this, which is... The, so there's a lot of things I really don't like about this. This is really gross. I don't like this solution. Um, the one I was expecting was more wildcardy. Uh, so you could do like when it's, uh, say, case when it's true and true. You could do something like that and search for specific cases or give it like parameters or something. Uh, to my knowledge, that doesn't work. I spent like two hours trying to figure that out and it, it, it I don't think it's something that is implemented. Uh, it would have been super nice. I would that's something that I was really looking forward to, but I don't think that's coming and I don't think they did it. So we're going to ignore that. Uh, I'm going to go figure out what these are, and then we'll we'll pick back up once I actually know what I'm doing. I, again, first time touching any of this, so I'm kind of shooting blind here. Got it. So what I was doing wrong is we actually don't want, we don't need this here. You can just use a variable, and everything sorts itself out. Got it. <laughs> so what this is going to do is this is going to be an implied type. It's going to say... You can actually see what type it's saying it is here. Uh, so it's going to pull out X and Y there. Uh, and then we can do all of our all of our checks. So all we need is four of these. Uh, our last type is going to be just print the number. Uh, so that's just false and false. And then we'll do uh, fizz, which will just be true and false. And then buzz, which will just be false and true. So divisible by five is this one. Uh, divisible by 3 is this one, and divisible by 3 and 5 is the top one. Apparently, there's scoping issues. That's... Oh, right, that makes sense. Because So there's no scope implied inside of a switch statement, which gets you into this kind of issue. You can't do this well. Uh, so instead, we're going to do fizzbuzz which I don't know about this. I'm kind of making this up as I go. We'll see how this works. Uh, 
buzz as our last one, and then we can keep the, the final one as result. Why is bad value? What? Build? Okay. Resharper's freaking out. <laughs> That's fine. It seems it, it compiles. Uh, so I guess this is a good example of don't always trust your intelligence. I, I don't know. Uh, so all we need to do now is just actually write all of this stuff out. So we can just write line uh, fizzbuzz. And we're going to need three more copies of this. So for this one, we can actually just print out i, because uh, that's just how this is supposed to work. So we should see one, two, fizz, three, or four, buzz, whatever. Uh, so this will be our buzz, and this will be our fizz. And that should be it. That's that's our entire program. That should, I, I shouldn't say this yet, <laughs> that should work. Or it'll print hello world, because I didn't take that out. Uh, so actually, this is more than our entire program. Uh, so I'm going to pull this down, keep our read line there so it doesn't crash, and then we'll do this. Uh, so should be able to run this, and we get output that makes some sense. Uh, 15 is fizzbuzz, which is our first instance of that, and that makes sense. Uh, 30 is the next one, and it just keeps going. Uh, so this is fizzbuzz using C sharp seven features. Uh, so we have just going back through everything. We're switching on a tuple value, and then we are selecting based on the value of that. We could have used an, an if statement for this, but now we can use a switch if we feel like it. Uh, you can also use types or whatever you want. Uh, so if we had an unknown type, or say you you have an interface, uh, if you there if you want to have handle specific implementations of that interface differently. You actually can do that now. Uh, and you can, th there's probably a lot of unexplored territory with this. I think you can use it a lot. Um, and if I'm remembering correctly, Rust has a similar feature, but I've never used Rust, so I should probably shouldn't say that. Uh, I believe Rust is actually, has more, uh, and they can actually do that thing I was talking about earlier with the, the wildcards and stuff. Anyway, this is a full implementation of Fizzbuzz. It uses tuples and pattern matching in C Sharp 7. And I think that's it. It's fairly straightforward. There's nothing too complex here. It's not super, it's not super complicated. And it's actually, I don't know how well it reads. Uh, maybe if we had better naming for X and Y, it would probably read better. Uh, but other than that, this actually, it works out pretty well in 30 lines including like our includes and everything that's not that's not too bad so yeah i i think that i think we'll leave it here so if there's anything else you guys have uh questions on or any c sharp 7 features you're interested in there's more than this uh, this is just two of the ones that i was really interested in uh or if you're interested in something new with like visual studio 2017 i almost said a whole bunch of different words there but um <laughs> Yeah, if there's something you're interested in in Visual Studio 2017, let me know. I don't know much about what came with it. It looks like there's a data lake ta tab, but no idea what that does. So um, there's, there's more to explore here. So if there's something you guys have questions on, let me know, and I'm happy to go and at least poke at it. So uh, yeah. So if there's anything else you guys want to see, or if you have any just feedback or anything you want me to change, let me know. Uh, but until next time, See you, internet.